Hey everyone, uh, as you may notice, this is not a thing of the day video. Uh, in fact, just a little bit of news, I've decided to put thing of the day on hiatus until I graduate at the end of this semester. That way I can dedicate all of my, uh, all of my attention and mental faculties such that they may be um, to the task of making sure I don't perform an academic belly flop uh, just so you know I can graduate. Uh, once I graduate, once the semester is over, then I will happily take up the thing of the day mantle once again and uh, get those things going at a nice steady pace. But that is not what this video is about. This video is about uh, a little bit of danger. Uh, see behind me, if we can switch over to camera two, uh, is a propeller I have 3D printed. Now normally the kind of things I 3D print don't have to withstand many intense forces, shall we, shall we say. They're little models or l a little blank inserts just to fill up a hole or something. You know, just, you know, like my dad asked me to make an insert to fill the hole in a laser disc so he can make a clock out of it. But this is the first thing I've ever printed that would actually have to withstand some sort of serious force. And uh, to be quite honest, I'm a little afraid of it because my 3D printer is not exactly the best 3D printer in the world. In fact, um, I'll, be, I'll be pretty honest, this is probably a, criti a pretty crap printer um, for a number of different reasons, which I'll get into in another video in the future. Um, so, but I think I've managed to dial it into a point and now I've been kind of sitting, having this propeller on a shelf for a little bit and I'm a little bit afraid of testing it. So um, what I'm going to be doing is I have my little camera over there uh, recording it and I'm going to actually test this thing. I have it hooked up to a uh, remote control drift car motor which creates a lot of torques and some pretty high RPMs and it's connected to an Arduino which I will be um, controlling from my computer over here if we can switch to the screen and uh, we'll get that going. We'll see just how far we can push it until this thing breaks. So, let's do this. So, here we are at the screen of, um, I guess what I'm going to call Mission Control for the moment. Yeah, Mission Control. That's pretty good. Uh, and what we got is we've got my uh, the Arduino program that I'm using to test the uh, the propeller with it's a um, it's a kludge of various different servo test uh, programs I've uh, I've gotten in the past and I've just sort of co cobbled them together and customized them to what I want uh, that's loaded onto an Arduino Micro which is hooked up to the electronic speed controller which drives the uh, RC car drift motor which is connected to the propeller this thing can get up to ridiculous speeds because it's got to uh, generate uh, uses the gear ratio to turn uh, that speed into torque, and that's what lets the RC car drift. So this is going to be a good motor to test it with. Uh, in addition, we've got the actual control window here. This is just a regular serial window that I'm going to be sending the commands to the Arduino 2. Uh, and over on this side, hopefully, will be a uh, the video from the flip video camera uh, that's going to be right up close and personal. And on the bottom here is from my actual good HD camcorder. That's a nice, a respectable distance away. Actually, it's further away from the propeller than I am. So um, it's uh, it's in a good place to be, and it's nice and zoomed in on it, so you can see the exact moment that it explodes, if it explodes. So what we're going to do is we're going to ramp up the speed on this. Uh, we're going to take it to the max in both the forward and the backward directions. Uh, in the backward, we're going to be doing it first that way because it's got a lower range. Um, then we're going to go to forward and hopefully, hopefully it survives. But if it doesn't, well, we have a nice entertaining bit of explosion. So hold on to your seatbelts, everyone. All right, so let's kick this thing off. Let's get into a nice sort of standby position with the servo. Nice. Uh, let's start bringing it down. We're going to take it down to 89 first and we're going to just ramp our way down. You can already hear the uh, the motor whining. There we go. 86. We're going to take it in uh, 87. We're going to take it in two degree intervals. 87. 85. Oh, we got a little bit of spinning there. 83. 
a little bit, a little bit. 81. Okay, now it is officially spinning. Um, all right, let's see what, how far we can take this. Okay, now we're to start ramping it up. 79. 77. 75. 73. 71. This is making some scary noises, folks. 69! Sixty-seven! Okay, I, um, I brought it back to 91 uh, because I wasn't hearing any difference in the pitch uh, of the air rushing away from it. Um, so there was that. Uh, now let's start it in the forward direction. Oh boy. Now, forward direction is going to be kind of tricky because now in this direction, the propeller is actually going to be pushing uh, the air current backwards. Uh, a, towards the back of the motor, which means it's going to be wanting to come off of the uh, the axle. So um, I, I think it's nice and snug enough. So let's try and let's see how far we can go before it either flies off, um, explodes, or we just can't take it any further. Uh, and that upper bound is 180 uh, degrees. So if you're keeping track, here we go. And we go. Holy frijoles, that is a lot louder than it was when we initially started. Let's maybe start up from 90 again. So let's go to 95. Okay, that quieted the motor down a bit. Okay, let's go to 100. We're already rotating. Increment this one a little bit better. 102. 104, 106, 108, shit's getting loud, 110, let's go by fives now, 115, 120, 130, oops, Well, that was about the uh, the peak that it can go, and if it hasn't exploded from that, it probably won't. But let's get in and let's let's check the damage, shall we? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the actual motor from its power supply, so no technical glitches bite our hands off. There we go. Good policy that. Next, we're going to shut off the ESC altogether. There we go. So let's turn this puppy around and see what we've got. <laughs> there we go. All right. So it still looks pretty damn okay. Maybe we can zoom in to get some fine detail on that. Mm -hmm. Not seeing any signs of stress on the edges. Nor, if we zoom in a bit more, come on, figure it out, camera. Come on, all right. Nor on the outer edges, nor on the outside. Looks pretty good. Well, it didn't explode, but it's still a valuable test, and hopefully we learned a bit out of this. So there's that. So like I said, uh, thing of the day is going to be postponed until after I graduate. Uh, unfortunately, that's just the case of it. Case it is. Uh, I'm going to work on creating a uh, a feed where you guys can uh, 
subscribe to to see what I would normally put for thing of the day. Uh, I read a lot of articles on a daily basis and eh, maybe at least a few of them will pique your interest. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the next video after this should be a video that I'm collaborating with Erin Sharice. You saw her on, um, <laughs> uh, sorry, you saw her on Friday Night Party Line. She was our special guest and she does a great Pokemon channel. Erin, I'm really sorry for not uh, getting this vid that video, my part of the video, together for you. Um, hopefully you should get that within the next week or so. Um, so that uh, should be that. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Expect a few tiny videos here and there, probably made on my phone. And that's about that. I'll see you guys later.